Thank you for having me here today, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you more about how the National Library has built and promoted it, the National Web Archive. So I am a web archivist in the National Library, and along with my colleagues Joanna Finnegan and Della Keating, we make up the Web Archives team within the Digital Collections Department um, of the National Library. So you may be familiar what we what, with what we traditionally do in the NLI and what we do with our wonderful collections and the great work we've done with digitising and making available some of these national treasures. But you may not be familiar with our emerging born digital collections uh, such as the Web Archive. So today I'm going to talk to you about our Web Archive and I'm going to bring you through how the Web Archive came to be, our collections and how we promote this new concept to our stakeholders. So the web is just over a quarter of a century old and a whole generation of people, including most people here, cannot imagine what life would be like in Ireland without the internet. So the way in which libraries and archives function has completely changed in the past 20 years. And these changes have had massive implications for um, institutions like uh, the National Library. So we've realized that we need to change um, with the, uh, sorry, we need to evolve with the changing nature of our world and this must be reflected in our collections. So one way in which the National Library has responded to these changes is by starting a web archive. So let's get right back to the beginning and down to basics. Uh, what is a web archive? Well, a web archive is a collection of websites that have been archived at a certain point in time. So a copy of a set of website is then preserved in an archival format, a work file, and made available and accessible to researchers. So it's not too unlike what the National Library does with any other of its material in any other format. We preserve it and we make it available. An archived website looks and behaves like any live website. And a common misconception is that an archived website is like a screen grab, or it's static, or it's a screenshot, but in fact, it's fully functioning. You can click through it like a live website, and most interestingly, you can download attachments like PDFs um, and Word docs and forms and other things like that. So there are web archives all over the world, and you may be familiar with the Internet Archives Wayback Machine, which has been archiving the, the entire web um, for a long time now. So this has been in the news lately as it moves to protect its collections from the uh, current political climate in the US. So national libraries all over the world have developed their web uh, collections, including the British Library and the Bibliothèque Nationale in France. So the web archive ensures that information published on the web will be available to researchers um, both today and in the future. So have a quick look at this image and see what happens in just one minute online. We've got 350,000 tweets in just one minute. And this is an incredible... Um, exchange and creation of data that's happening and increasing on a daily basis. So the web archive protects this data and preserves it for the future. But the question I get asked over and over and over again is why bother? Why does the National Library of Ireland archive the Irish web? But if you think about it, we are all familiar with that horrible dreaded 404 error, um, meaning that a link you know, that we saved a year ago and that we always meant to read and never got around to has either been moved or deleted. So would you be surprised to learn that uh, in their first year, 80% of URLs are either changed or deleted in just one year? So imagine if the National Library didn't preserve 80% of the books uh, published in Ireland, and imagine that loss of information and imagine the implications, not to mention the uproar that would occur um, for future generations of researchers. So the internet is unreliable, and most of all, it's unpredictable. And websites can come and go with many disappearing in what seems like a blink of an eye. The inherent nature of the internet can and will result in immeasurable information loss that will have a devastating impact on future generations of researchers. And this is clearly a terrifying um, scenario for me, but for all information uh, professionals out there. So this is where the Irish Web Archive comes in. Our Web Ar Archive helps preserve vulnerable websites and ensure the longevity of this vital data for generations to come. 
It is the National Library's mission to collect, preserve, promote and make available the documentary and intellectual life of Ireland and we've been doing this for 140 years. So just as we have always protected and made available books, manuscripts and other printed material, we are now actively preserving what is, that's what is published online in Ireland. And although the format in which published material is delivered has changed, the mandate of the National Library to collect for on behalf of the state has not. It is imperative that we preserve online activity, not only for academic researchers in the future, but also to preserve a sense of our shared digital heritage. The NLI recognised this need for active preservation and we undertook our first thematic cause in 2011. Working with the Internet Memory Foundation, a not-for-profit web archiving organisation based in Paris, we crawl and publish material on a regular basis. And last year alone, we archived close to 1,000 websites, and we are now in the process of making these available. But how do we do it? Well, there are five main stages to the web archiving process, and I'm going to quickly go through each stage with you. So the first is the selection phase, and this is by far the most labour-intensive phase. So we engage in what we call thematic crawls. And in other words, we selectively pick websites for, for preservation. We identify themes that are in line with the National Library's collection development policy. And so in that way, we primarily focus on Irish websites and websites of Irish interest. And in this way, you can see uh, that the collecting of material has not changed. Our methods have merely evolved. And our collections are, are diverse. They include political collections, cultural websites, creative websites, blogs, satirical websites, um, and everything in between. For example, we collect websites that might already complement some of the collections that we hold. So for example, we, we are the proud holders of the Irish Country Women's Association manuscript collection, and we also captured their website last year to reflect um, what they, uh, the event that they held for uh, the 2016 commemorations. And in this way, we also have David Norris's paper, personal papers and also a copy of his website uh, from the 2011 presidential campaign. So by far, the largest thematic collection in the web archive is certainly political, and this must have a, a reflection on what we, we love in Ireland. So we have collected websites from every general, local, presidential, and every referendum since 2011. And here are some of the examples of political sites that we have from 2011. So spot which one um, doesn't, it was no longer existing. <laughs> so you can see in this way that we have copies of these websites and that they do hold um, their value long after they've gone from the live, the live internet. So as you might be aware, the copyright legislation, the dreaded copyright, uh, doesn't extend to publish, digital published um, outputs in Ireland. So legal deposit doesn't extend to anything that is in digital form, which is outrageous, but nonetheless, we, um, so we are forced to contact every website owner um, before we archive their website. So this is definitely a time-consuming process. But in the past six years, we have had an overwhelmingly positive response to the website. Um, so moving on, we then start work on the physical crawls. And as I mentioned before, we work with Internet Memory, and they work with many um, national and state bodies across Europe. So for example, Prony in the North, and they also work with the UK Parliamentary Archive to archive websites on their behalf. So we select our date and time with them, and our auto, their automatic web crawler harvests the websites for us. So it is worth bearing in mind there are some technical limitations to the, process, or to the software that we use. So we do have trouble capturing things like Facebook, embedded videos, websites that are really heavily um, based on Flash. Um, but a, quali a lengthy QA process with um, internet memory kind of tries to negate some of these issues that we have. So once the QA stage is finished and the sites are then ready to be published and made available, websites must be catalogued on our system um, before they can be published. And once they're published, they're made available on our website. So we're a national cultural institution and it is important for us to be able to provide access to all our users. And we are a Dublin-based institution and we're very aware of that and we serve all Irish people both at home and abroad. And so we're very pleased to be able to provide access to our web archives. Uh, you, to users anywhere in the world. 
So I've given you a bit of context there as to how we build our collections. And having this wonderful resource is all well and good, but we need to promote the web archive uh, to our current and future stakeholders. And as with many other cultural institutions, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, 2016 was a big year for the National Library's web archive. Um, so in addition to our 2016 project, which I'll talk to you about now, it was our lar um, which was our largest ever web archive collection, we also captured almost 200 election-related websites and social media accounts uh, for GE16 um, on, separate, on different dates, both before and after the collection, and they will be made available next week. So we were lucky to be able to be granted the resources to not only extend our collections, but also to promote it. So our 2016 project, Remembering 1916, Recording 2016, was focused on collecting the conversation and dialogue and recording the online story of the commemorations of last year. So funded by the Department of Arts, Heritage, Regional, Rural and Gwaeltacht Affairs, my role is very much centred on outreach and promoting the web archive. And this has not been without difficulty, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we achieved last year and highlight some of the challenges that we faced. So what did we want to achieve? How could we successfully promote the web archive? And how could we boost its visibility and engage directly with our stakeholders? And what resources did we need to achieve this? Firstly, we looked at our available resources. And the first stop was naturally social media. And this plays an enormous part in archives and librarians' lives, whether we like that or not. And there are amazing examples of uh, wonderful social media in libraries and special collections all over Ireland, including NUIG's amazing special collections and um, UCD's special collections Twitter account, which is particularly good. So the National Library has a well-developed social media network. And we have over 24,000 followers on Twitter and over 19,000 um, on Facebook. So using these platforms was an obvious way to harness our community and inform them about the existence of the Web Archive. Working closely with our colleagues in the Library's Education and Outreach Department, for the first time in five years, we began to promote the Web Archive. We focused on outlining the premise of the Web Archive and highlighting the types of collections, the types of websites that we already had within the Web Archive. We tweeted about websites and organisations that we were collecting and also the, the different themes we, were collect we collected. So we looked to also include facts behind the Web Archive and give people a sense as to why the National Library was engaging in this sort of activity. The easiest way to do this was by far with Twitter and Facebook. Um, they allowed us to actively engage with our community and although social media planning and blog writing is time consuming, it is a valuable free tool at our disposal and when we posted we could see um, by using Google Analytics a definite increase in the number of people visiting the web archive and visiting the web archive information on the National Library's website. So moving away from social media, we also engaged in more traditional forms of outreach and we invested in new branding for the web archive and this was important to give it a recognisable presence throughout the National Library's campus. Flyers and banners were also commissioned to help boost visibility and we held talks in-house which were pitched as an introduction to the web archive and we were delighted to be I invited to speak about the Web Archive at various events last year, so for Heritage Week and for the Dublin Festival of History. So we were also delighted to be featured um, in the Irish Times and other pieces in print newspaper across the country. So this helped all boost our profile. And this publicity was greatly appreciated. Um, we were thrilled to be featured on the broadsheet and the journal and the Irish Times, and we couldn't have um, expected that when we started off last year. But we also wanted to engage with our stakeholders. And as part of the 1916 project, so remembering 1916, recording 2016, we wanted the opinion of our stakeholders taken into account. And in March of 2016, we engaged with over 70 academics, librarians, archivists, and those directly involved in the 2016 commemorations. And so they were asked what websites they felt should be included in the web archive. Um, by engaging this way with our stakeholders and colleagues, we not only enriched our holdings, but we also helped bring to their attention the existence of the National Library's web archive. So the entire year's efforts to promote the, promote the web archive culminated in our public call. 
and communicating with our community was always an important part of what we aimed to do last year. And it was an important part of the 2016 commemorations uh, across Ireland in general. So we wanted the people to help us build what would become the archive of the future. And so we asked the public to tell us what websites they felt should be saved. We asked them what websites best remembered the events of 1916 and what websites best recorded life in Ireland in 2016. And we carried out this um, competition through SurveyMonkey and we promoted it extensively through all social media channels that we had with physical posters and leaflets throughout the National Library's campus. And this competition, which was quite surprising, resonated strongly in the counties across Ireland. So it wasn't just um, Dublin, people that got involved. And it was featured in a number of regional newspapers and on local radio across Ireland. So after four weeks, we closed the polls and we calculated the top five websites with the most votes in both categories. And in December, we held an event in the National Library which saw the winners come together and be celebrated. The Minister, Heather Humphreys, and John Concannon, the head of the Ireland 2016 Fund, um, presented the winning websites with their awards. And so here are the um, winners pictured on the steps in the National Library with Sandra and the, some members of the board and John Concannon in the back. So in the 2016 category, we were delighted to award Century Ireland, Come Here to Me, Galway Decade of Commemorations, Westport 1916, and Return, the Return to Hospital's Birth of a Nation. And I know Anne has a poster outside which shows just what a wonderful exhibition that was. And in the 2016 category, probably not surprising, the Broadsheet.ie, Irish Times, Rabble Magazine, The Journal, and pe what people were most surprised with um, was Waterford Whispers News. <laughs> Got a bit of a laugh on the day. I don't think the minister knew what to do. Um, so the competition had two objectives from the start. We firstly wanted to publicise the web archive, and we thought this was kind of a novel way to do it. But we also wanted to engage with our community. And we, serve, we do serve all Irish people, both at home and abroad, and we do have such a large diaspora abroad. And given the strong participatory nature of 2016, we wanted the web archive to reflect this. So after a busy year, what did we achieve? Well, we were delighted with the opportunity the 2016 commemorations gave us. And I'd imagine a lot of people out there were delighted with the funding and the opportunity to showcase their collections, whatever they may be. It was a unique event, and first and foremost, we were focused on collecting and preserving a record of the online representation of the 2016 commemorations. And that's what we do um, in the National Library. It is a living collection, and we continuously add to it as you can see yesterday from our magnificent edition of the Yates material that arrived at the National Library yesterday. Um, and so the addition of 455 diverse and new websites to the web archive was a really great achievement and we couldn't have done this without support from our parent department. Um, the opportunity to work with all aspects of our stakeholders goes to the very core of what the National Library wants to do. And it was wonderful to be able to capture and record their thoughts and opinions in the web archive. And with this, the increase in visibility, and not only on the National Library's campus, but across Ireland and online, we created a greater public awareness regarding the web archive. And we really feel like that has been achieved in the past year. Given all the publicity and outreach events, that were held last year, we were delighted that we could see a visible increase in the amount of people accessing the web archive collections, and that really was our primary goal. However, we did fee face significant challenges, and if anyone out there works with born digital content, or is starting to work with born digital content, they'll know it's a really hard sell. It's not as visually appealing as a 12th century book or manuscript, um, it's certainly not attractive. <laughs> But web archives will be the primary resources for the future. And this kind of digital material clearly warrants preservation. And as professionals, we know that. We know that we have to engage in digital preservation. But how do we sell that and make it attractive to our stakeholders? So the main issue that we face is that people do not understand what a web archive is. As an archivist, people have a hard time understanding what an archive is, <laughs> let alone what a web archive is. 
And that's completely understandable. It's a new and unusual concept. And many people don't grasp that it fully um, functions almost like a live site, and that it isn't in fact just an image, or as many people tell me, a screenshot. So its potential hasn't been fully realized either. And given the type of collections that we have, the potential audience range from students to journalists to um, political analysts. We know it's a treasure trove waiting to be discovered, and we know this, so we just need to sell it to our users. So what next for the National Library? Well, the NLI is committed to continuing to collect the online life of Ireland. Despite legislative issues, we are continuing to collect on the topics and themes that reflect Irish life in 21st century Ireland. And we are also committed to promoting the web archive and engaging with our stakeholders. And we understand the value of the web archive and we know that's evident. So we're going to continue our efforts throughout 2017 and onwards and to publicise and grow our number of users. So you can follow the web archive on the National Library's Facebook, Twitter, um, our blog, and if you have any suggestions for websites that you might like to include in the web archive, you can email us um, on that email address there. So if anyone has any questions, I'll take them. Thanks for, oh, can you hear me? No. Okay, we have time for one question. <laughs> Make it a good one. Yeah, I mean, we have lost a lot. Um, it's the nature of the, web, of the web, um, and it's happened as this year that we have scheduled a website to be archived on the Friday, and when we look at it on the Thursday, it's gone. And we have no recall for that, so once it's gone off the internet, it's completely gone. Um, so one way that's kind of particularly evident and what we focus on is um, department, departmental websites, so they are constantly changing. I mean, how many times has the Department of Arts changed its name? <laughs> so we concentrate on collecting material that we identify that might be vulnerable. So like a lot of the material last year, we knew that wasn't going to last, that it wasn't going to be there forever. And so we would have focused our attempts and our resources on collecting what we think is, at, is most at risk. I'm sure they do, um, and we can only access, our crawlers can only access um, what's there. Um, like the, web, the Wayback Machine has done wonderful work, but the problem with that, that is, and I don't know if anyone has used it, they're really shallow crawls, like you're one hop in and you can't access that information. Um, so what we try to do is get go as far in as possible, and we focus on downloading things like PDFs, PDF publications, which in a lot of the government, the government departments, they would be the main way of um, publishing their materials. So we do try to get as much as possible. But it's constantly changing. Like, we've started collecting Twitter now on a regular basis. We're really excited about that, but we still can't get Facebook for whatever technical reason. Um, so we're really, technology is moving so far forward. But I think the, the worth of it and the value of it is, is really evident to us, at least. <laughs>